everybody so this I know this is kind of like a different type of video that I'm doing today um, I just felt like I had a lot to say about this topic or issue or whatever and I felt like hey why not sit down and talk about it right and maybe you guys could relate to I don't know it's about I zone I I, I zone is that how you say it I don't know I I zone eyes I, I <laughs> anyways um, so if some of you may not have known uh, the produce 48 finale was yesterday and the top 12 members of IE Zone were finally announced and for those of you who don't know I have been keeping up with produce 48 I do watch it every week um, I watch it without subs and I watch it with subs so yeah I'm an avid like fan I keep up with it the topic of this video is basically about like the whole issue regarding the members. I know a lot of people are dissatisfied and people are just borderline bitter about the final lineup. Um, I think only three Japanese members made it into the final lineup, which is, I do agree, unfair. Um, but like honestly, it's not like we didn't see it coming. Like, like I don't know what's gonna happen. Um, there's gonna be a huge disadvantage for the Japanese trainees because of the communication barrier, right? I wasn't surprised that only Hitomi, Sakura, and uh, Nako made it into the final lineup and basically the other whatever, the other girls were all Korean. That's a whole other issue though. So as you all know, let's talk about the final lineup. So I've seen a lot of things raised about this lineup and people are like worried and stuff like that and they're saying how like oh the lineup is just filled with visuals people don't care about talent this and that and to an extent I do agree but at the same time like a lot of people are very upset about this lineup and they're saying oh we don't stand Chaeyoon's gonna save the group blah 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 and although I do feel that to some extent you guys are gonna say that now but like from a year or two from now, you guys are gonna cry when they disband. Like, you're gonna be so sad. You're gonna learn to love the members. I remember when, um, during Produce 101 Season 1, when IOI members were announced, everybody was pissed. Like, everybody was like, oh my god, IOI is gonna flop, this and that. Um, nobody liked the lineup. There were a lot of complaints. Like, I was there on Stan Twit, and everybody was like going off about the lineup. Um, and I'm sitting here like, okay. Yeah, but now, who misses IOI? Everybody, right? Like, everybody learned to love the members of IOI, like, you may be dissatisfied at first, but through time, you're gonna learn to love the members anyway. Honestly, like, I don't see why everybody's complaining, cause like, just a year from now, a year or two from now, you guys are gonna be like, oh my god, we love IZone so much, blah blah blah, this and that. The same with 101, a lot of people were dissatisfied with 101's final lineup. Including me. <laughs> um, I was dissatisfied, but I was also very happy because Daniel made it and he was number one. But at the same time, I was very upset about Jung Hyun and um, Samuel not making it because they were so talented. They are so talented and they didn't make it. So we were kind of like... Right? And history obviously repeated itself with Gan, But honestly, like, look at 101 now. They have so many fans, like... Um, but yeah, like, I just can't take it when people complain so much about the final lineup because then you're going to learn to love them. That's my point. See, the thing is about the season, it was very unexpected. Like, you could not see what was coming every episode. Every elimination, it was different. Like, the rankings, they were not expected at all. That, I think that's what threw me off the most about this season and had me also very suspicious. The previous seasons, it was different because you could always tell, like, at least who the top four were. Or at least, like, one person will shoot up out of nowhere and you'll be like, oh, okay, cool. But number one and two never stay consistent throughout the season, and that's what had me a bit skeptical about whether Produce was rigged or not. Honestly, international fans aren't allowed to vote, so that's already a huge factor. We don't know what Koreans think, but... I, like, I don't know. I don't know how to feel. She ranked third place, and she dropped all the way down to number 12. 
Cheyenne is the one girl that deserves to debut the most in this group because after what happened with uh, 16 and she was on K-pop star, like she deserves it. And she's literally one of she's one of the most talented, if not the most talented girls in Produce 48. Like there's nothing she can't do. She's very self-conscious about her looks and people shit on her because of her looks too which I don't get because I think she's adorable and I'm just baffled at how like shallow people can be sometimes they like Koreans like in Korea they obviously value looks over talent most of the time but like it's it just baffles me at how like I feel so bad for her sometimes, right? And it's just kind of like, she deserved a higher rank. Like, I think we can all agree that she deserved a higher rank than number 12. But I'm glad that she's actually in the lineup. If she wasn't, I don't think I'd be here right now, like, making a video about this. <laughs> Coming to the final lineup, I do have some opinions about them, like, my personal opinions. I'm satisfied for the most part. I do wish there was, I do wish that um, Miru and Miu also made it into the group, but it's sad that they didn't because I really like them. Like honestly, I see a lot of people shitting on the useless members of the group, which honestly you could never avoid now in K-pop. It's just kind of like, I'm gonna be honest here, like in IOI, when Sohei was announced as a member, I was literally like, why? Why? She kind of reminds me uh, of, like, uh, what do you call it? Sohei kind of mirrors, or Heiwon, Heiwon, kind of mirrors Sohei in a way because they both try their best, but they're not the most talented members of the group. They both are very awkward, this and that. And that's what I realized, and, like, honestly, I'm not a fan of both, but I do respect them. I just, I don't even know where I'm going with this. I, the final lineup is just... Like, I know they're gonna get a lot of hate for now, but in the end, they're gonna... I feel like they're gonna make history in K-pop. Like, they're gonna do so well. I know it in my gut. Even though, like, I'm not a fan of some of the members, like, I still do support them uh, as a whole. The final lineup, overall, like, there's nothing you can really change about it. Perhaps Produce 48 is rigged, but I'm not going to comment on that because I don't work for Mnet, so I don't know, right? I think the most sh shocking factor was Kyle not making it into the final lineup. And like, I literally had like, like, history literally repeated itself with season three comparing to season two. Like, I can't believe that both Pledis leaders basically ended up in the same spot like I I literally hate when Mnet reveals like the you know when um the part where they reveal the top not top sorry uh borderline elimination thingy during the live finale and it's literally like four girls and then everybody scrambles to vote for them and stuff like that so I'm like okay you're basically rigging the votes. Cause I remember last time, um, JV, who was on like the cut line for number 11, I think like that, he literally shot up to number three afterwards. And I was like, how did you do that within like an hour? I don't understand. Like, <sighs> another thing I wanted to talk about. So a lot of people were saying how basically iZone doesn't have like a vocal line or whatever. Like they don't have strong vocals. Because at least in IOI they had Yeonjang, but like, let's be real here, in IOI, half, like more than half the time, like their members weren't even there. Because I think they mainly promoted as a subunit. Like they only had, what, a debut and two comebacks. So there wasn't much to judge from there, but for IOI, they, di they didn't have the strongest vocal line either. They had Sejong and Yeonjang, but... Um, during What a Man, like, they had no strong vocals whatsoever. Yet they still pulled it off. Chunga, um, Q 
Chilkyum, uh, Doyon, like they literally pulled through. Like you don't know what these girls are capable of, guys. Just because they don't showcase it through produce doesn't mean that they can't do it. Like you guys will be, I, I'm sure you guys will be blown away, and I will probably too, by what these girls can do once they do debut and once they do put their potential, like they maximize their potential, right? Because in produce, you can only showcase so much to the audience that like, and you gotta focus on what you're best at, right? But just because you're focusing on what you're best at doesn't mean that you can't do it. My camera stopped recording. Continuing on. So we know that, we know that Cheon is like an all-rounder. We know she'll be great and I know she's gonna carry the group a lot, but for the girls who didn't get to show much, I know Changwon, um, she didn't show much, so a lot of people were like shocked that she even made it into the final lineup. Um, I was shocked too because like she was one of my favorites and I didn't think she was going to make it this far, but she did and I'm so excited to see what she has to show. But um, yeah, no, I feel like a lot of the girls, like Minju as well, they're going to they're gonna end up blowing us away. Like they didn't get to show a lot on produce, but once they do debut, they're going to get like a lot of chances to do so, um, yeah, that's that. And we all know Sakura, like, she wasn't my um, top 12, but she was one of the contestants that I was rooting for as well. Um, I liked her a lot. I know she's gonna, like, do super well in the group. She's gonna, <laughs> if not, probably, like, bring a lot of attention to the group from Japan, at least. Um, yeah, no, like, she's gonna do amazing, and, like, I can't wait to see what she brings to the group. Uh, Hitomi, I know in the beginning that, like, she, uh, people said she had weak vocals and stuff like that, but she's a really great dancer, and, like, we see, we saw during the debut evaluation that she can sing, like, she can hit those notes, so, like, I feel like we should, like, everybody should just give the final group at least a chance. Um, like, you never know what they're gonna what they're gonna show. Another topic I wanted to talk about was um, the number one spot. A lot of people are unsatisfied with number one um, being Starship's One Young, and honestly, I do agree again to some extent. But there, it's like there's nothing you can do about it. Like just, just stand, right? Like she got number one for a reason. She wouldn't have gotten all the votes if. It wasn't for Korea. So Korea obviously saw something in her that a lot of you know. I don't know, but she's not untalented. Like she can. Like everybody in Produce 48 are talented. Okay, like they wouldn't be there if they weren't. Um, they at least have some type of talent. But Won Young, like she can dance. She can sing. Like maybe she can't hit like high notes. Maybe she's not a powerful vocal. But like I'm sure within time she'll be able to. Improve, especially when she's in the group because in the group when you're when you're in the group you have to work so much harder than you did when you were training right you have to live up to standards obviously um, but yeah a lot of people are dissatisfied and stuff like that and I'm just like just give the girl a chance like she can probably surprise you you never know all of these numbers can surprise you um, yeah no I'm I just feel so bad that they're already getting so much crap right now that like and they haven't even debuted yet but like honestly this is just a reminder of what happened for IOI and 101 they also got a lot of hate for the final lineup but look at where they are now you guys get the gist of it I want to know what you what your opinions are about the final lineup um, what you think about the members um, I would comment on every member but honestly like I love them as they are uh, I will support them I will stand <laughs> because I love my girl groups, uh, but yeah, no, like, comment down below what you guys think about the final lineup, what concepts do you guys think that they're gonna go for, I think they're gonna go for cutesy concept, because that's what they kinda, their overall image looks like right now, um, but yeah, if you guys wanna hear more, like, opinion-related videos, let me know too, because I am very opinionated, but most of the time I don't like talking about it because it's deemed as problematic. So yeah, I don't know. If you guys enjoyed it, let me know. Maybe I'll make more. I guess I'll talk to you guys next time.